You're watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin, and we have a special guest, one of our favorite friends of the show, cybersecurity expert, musician, pilot, all around awesome guy, Brad Ramber. Welcome back. Fist bump. What the tech with Brad Ramber is Look, happening here. I'm looking for the circuit card to nowhere as part of the intro. Circuit card to nowhere. Yep. I love it. You got your own graphic. Uh, it's always a pleasure having you here. I'm I feel like we have here. so much to catch up on. Yes, we do. And there's a lot of hot topics. Are you ready to dive yes, in? Yes, and that is not a store at a strip mall, hot topics. It is. It was. It was. Is, are they out of business? I don't know. Have They're you right shopped at Hot Topic? No, I've well, seen it. I think it's right next Topic? to Miller's oh. Outpost. Okay. 80s California for 500 It's not really my, could you, it's not really my jam. It's not, it's not your vibe. Not my vibe, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> okay, fair enough. No, I think I've walked in and did one loop and walked right back out. Yeah, no. There's nothing for me to see here. Yeah. No, sorry. Okay, so this was a topic that's important, yeah. especially uh, Jason, our floor director, actually sent this yes, to me. He said, yeah. you need Brad on here straight away to talk about oh, this. Yes, it, yes. It, and I didn't actually know about it, to, to be perfectly blunt. Uh, yeah. Fed now mm -hmm. is something that's happening now, yeah. later, then. <laughs> we don't know. But what is it? Tell us what it is, and um, so let's let's give you my understanding. Yes, uh, please. I believe FedNow is an overhaul of a interbank system. Okay. That um, manages how money and accounts are transferred back and forth um, from banks. So okay. right now we use uh, ACH, Automated Clearinghouse. Mm -hmm. That can take some time to get done, a day or two. Often it has to do with the bank running a computer processing job overnight okay. and then it catches up in the other bank mm -hmm. you got to make sure the funds have actually gone back and forth properly and this is something our business account will say hey give the routing number i need to do an ach Ex wire transfer well ach and, and wire transfer are two different mechanisms oh they are okay yes they are but that's okay so wire transfers that's the whole western union fraud thing you're going to wire transfer something to western wire union. transfer exactly uh -huh. to some other continent and poof there goes your money mm -hmm. whereas ach is a little more connected but there's a lot of fraud that get pro gets propagated there people have to change the ach information and send it to a new bank because your customer changed their bank or whatnot and then okay. they disappear right so with uh fed now my understanding is the technology that's getting put in place is going to make all those things happen a lot faster. Okay. So is there more fraud risk? I wouldn't think so, but I think because it can happen so fast, the accountability mechanisms will be easier and swifter to invoke if something goes sideways. So I'm so thinking like a security. The bank. reason to put it in place would be to protect users, to yeah. increase. Oh, yeah. uh, what, what are the reasons we would want this? The speed of transaction. Speed of transaction. Yeah, and and accuracy and reliability. So those engineer those systems, uh, re-engineered with uh, new security concepts and how the internet can and can't work and how banks work the way they do. Mm -hmm. but it's it's not a wheelbarrow full of gold coins going from one <laughs> bank to the next, right? It's, it's electronic. <laughs> well, I, I did a case study in school that wasn't where really, could you re <laughs> a wheelbarrow that? full of gold coins <laughs> yeah, going yeah. to the bank? Yes, it's okay. uh, all sorts of good. So is it monitoring? In a, in a different way or a more uh, invasive way, our transactions. Does a does an American citizen need to be worrying that some company or this FedNow application platform, I don't even know what to call it, is monitoring our transactions and th that could potentially be used against us or some sort of I negative way? I would say this th the same way for a lot of questions. If you are a law-abiding citizen, mm -hmm. there is nothing to worry about. Got it. Right, so the ability to see anything more, I don't know about that. Okay. I th my understanding is they're doing it so it can all happen, the transfers happen faster, and maybe on a, a point of transaction or a earlier point in time kind of thing. I probably should have had that TikTok that you sent me pulled up. Maybe we can watch it. Because there is a woman that, the video I was sent that she's saying, all of your transactions are gonna go to the government and they're gonna be able to monitor everything that you're doing. And it was a little bit, uh, 1984 it, Big Brother-esque. Yeah, well, so the, the, oh, we studied in school um, a situation where somebody knew what was going to happen with program trades between New York and Chicago, the Mercantile Exchange and the you know, New York Stock Exchange. Uh -huh. And someone had put a bunch of trades in <clears throat> and made a bunch of money. And it was an automated thing, early computers in the 80s. And they'd figured out that they had beat the ability to transmit from New York to Chicago 
by a matter of milliseconds, and that's how they knew it was faked. Hmm. So people are going to be trying to weaponize everything they can sure. all the time. I would strongly suspect that this is going to be built more securely and harder to do that than the current system. Okay. So it's not something to be worried about. It's something to... No, I wouldn't. Okay. There is a whole list on, I think you can Google the list of whether your bank is, is going to be in this system or not. Yeah. Now, we do not have a state bank. There's no King of America that owns the Bank of America. Bank mm -hmm. of America is a private entity. And, you know, there are member banks of the Federal Reserve. And so there are state banking charters, right? And so there's a lot going on with that. There's still companies... Um, if they're insured by the federal government, I think the federal government has a certain purview into that, but that is for another expert at another time. The yeah. moral of the story is if the government wants to see it, they probably could put a subpoena together and put that, you know, all under the microscope. But I think they have to have probable cause for that first. So, again, another expert at another time. Okay. So we're not worried about it at this juncture. I am not, okay. no. Okay, great. Um, now, this is a, an interesting article. Signs that the market may ignore the recession. So... We all, or I have always thought that a recession means the market's going to tank and how related are they? And we're not seeing that yet. There's been this fear, I think, since we've been doing the show, there's been worried about a crisis of the market and yeah. um, housing market, both, you know, all the markets mm -hmm. <laughs> everyone's been worried about. So what are we, where are we with that? Gosh, three main points. One, the only other time the market's behaved the way it has now was when World War II ended. And we stopped making Jeeps and airplanes and amphibious vehicles and returned to a peacetime economy. Uh, the stock market recovered pretty quickly from that. The nature of the jobs changed, but I don't think the volume of jobs uh, decreased. And so my theory is this. With COVID, and we had all the assistance for uh, parts of the economy that couldn't work because we had to all stay home. Yeah. You inject that amount of cash into a system, cash. Again, it wasn't a wheelbarrow full of gold coins. Yes. Okay. It's accounts and numbers and yep. kind of abstract arithmetic, to be honest. Uh, that's going to have an effect on an economy. And when the Germans printed currency to pay war reparations after World War I, that had an effect on their economy. We had an effect on ours. So what happened was the kinds of jobs shifted around. Mm -hmm. But then if you look at the stock market as companies in the private sector that have their equities being traded and what people are willing to pay for them, there's a lot of stuff that measure against one another. So if we're looking at employment rates being pretty low and we're seeing the stock market doing the thing it's doing, we're wondering why it looks the way it does because we haven't seen that look like this in 70 years or so now, right? And that's, that's the thing I find interesting. I don't you remember all those qualified remarks about a recession is two consecutive quarters of down growth or the inflation numbers. I don't exactly remember, but we never really hit that. Mm. Well, why didn't we? Well, because there was an opportunity to work, but why was the stock market doing something relatively different? Because kind of the predictive analytics of that weren't lining up. Hmm. Sorry, my propeller. That's my okay. Hat went going. So um, people don't have a lot to be fearful of in the way of the stock market. I mean, certainly numbers were dropping. Yeah. But it wasn't this big crash. No, no. Yeah. And, and, and here's what a lot of people have to understand, right? So this is, you know, we use the phrase hostile takeover. Well, why did those things happen? Well, it's because some guy was looking at the numbers and said the, the number of shares outstanding and what this is trading for, I can actually make more money by buying this company, achieving majority ownership, and then busting off the pieces, which should be more profitable given market conditions. And that's how that stuff all worked. So what a company's valued at and its market capital, what, what it can actually use to do that, there's a lot of premium built in versus you know its transaction value minus its, uh, its actual asset base divided by number of shares. There's a whole, yeah, I know. I so, glossed over. I, thought I, was, I, I glossed over a couple I, second, uh, minutes ago. I don't know what's happening. I'm a computer you guy. Camera on him only and <laughs> you just go because I've lost all hope. Yeah, this sorry, segment. sorry. <laughs> no, but... Um, we, we think it's a good thing. Yeah. And what about the recession? Do we see it? I mean, prices, inflation is horrific right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, think about all the corrections in the market where certain stuff gets way more expensive and food stuffs, right? So we all need food and shelter. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that takes people at whatever income level they're at and it impacts them most. If we've got to pay more for food, we've got to pay more for transportation, we've got to pay more for health care, things that nobody can avoid, right? That stuff matters. 
And so when we all had to stay home, example with eggs, you know, we have certain uh, ah. egg production that all goes to restaurants. And so what happens there when you can't run a restaurant? So you've got all this production chain that's yes. run up to run. And, and I feel like people are trying to make up for all the lost time during COVID. So they're sure. jacking up their prices. Hotel stays, I travel all the time with the kids. It's incredibly impossible to pay these fees right now. Hotels are jacking all the prices up. It's a little bit nuts. Yeah, we get into the supply and demand of it, right? And yeah. so sometimes when they get those prices up, I saw it funnily enough with RVs. Well, you can go RV. You have an RV? Sort of. We're going to uh, have to talk about this after oh, okay. break. Yeah, yeah. We're talking. Well, this was what the tech. We talked a little bit about the financial stock market at first. Yeah. Which made me gloss <laughs> <Sorry>. over. <laughs> and we'll be right back with more America Trends right after this quick break. Tech stuff next. Okay. okay? Cybersecurity stuff right after this. All right.